Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Mark Stark, as I am here on Facebook at 1.30 every week. Um, as you can see, I thought I'd work and film out of the house today. The White House, that is. Pretty nice, huh? I thought this was apropos today. Vote, vote, vote. Go to it if you haven't already. All right. Today, if you remember last week, um, there was a question and it, uh, it, it brought up about taking breaks, uh, especially we were talking about holiday breaks. Um, and, you know, after my session last time, I got numerous texts and calls about this concept about taking time off and taking breaks. So clearly, the question was not fully answered uh, last week. So uh, first of all, if you have questions, please um, always feel free. Send it in during the live session and uh, we'll do our very best to answer them uh, on air at that time. But if not, I certainly want to get these questions answered. And I have to tell you, uh, clearly there has been some either misunderstanding or I think just some points that, that are really not sinking in uh, for people to understand this concept about breaks. So today I'm going to be very direct, um, but I think it overall will be very, very helpful. So let's jump in and determine how to make free time happen, be very effective, and ultimately very special. All right, let's start off with reasons People do not take breaks. So let's just do some analysis around that. One, people tend to squander their time. In fact, they're taking breaks all the time on a constant basis. But here's the problem with that. When you take breaks constantly, you never really feel you have a uh, an effective break time. Why? Because... You know what? They're not consecutive. So when you don't take a break all at once, you really don't get that true feeling of having a break. Next, this is again why people don't take breaks. They tell themselves they can't afford it. Well, I can't get away. I can't afford it. And we're going to, we're going to, of course, stump every one of these as we go through today. They tell themselves they are too busy. Um, they really don't want to take a break. Uh, in fact, they're a workaholic. They enjoy working, or at least they believe uh, they enjoy working all the time. They would rather not get away. They spend very little time determining really what they want. So time just continues to fly by as it does, and they almost just wander through what they do, their career or whatever, because they really don't have a grasp around why they're doing what they're doing and what they're trying to accomplish. And then one of my pet peeves is they tend to take false scenarios and they build them in their head, basically arguing with the truth. And I've said this many times before, when you argue with the truth, you lose 100% of the time. All right, so these are reasons people have communicated to me. I've talked to sales executives and they've used these reasons. All right, we'll call them reasons. We can call them also excuses, but whatever their beliefs. And by the way, I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm here to give you some content that you can take this information and tweak where you feel you need to tweak going forward. All right, so we, so we talked a little bit about why people don't actually take breaks. So here's what I came up with. If you're sitting there and let's say you believe one of those scenarios that you say, yeah, I, I can't afford it um, or I am too busy, which I know came up last time. Um, whatever the case may be is I came up with my four musts. So if you want to take breaks, you want to th them to be effective and enjoyable, all right, and of course special, you've got to do these four must. Number one, and these are no specific order, you must make taking time, whatever that means to you, a priority. If you don't, it will never happen. 
And I'm going to review, and I know I've talked about priorities many times, but clearly priorities are important to you by the result. And here's a kicker. If I know breaks are important to you, you take them. It's all I need to know. If you're not taking breaks, they're not important to you. It's a really simple system. Um, okay. That's all I'm going to cover there. I've got, I'm going to cover that last point that I have written down at a later time. All right. So they're a priority to you and you know that because you actually do it. Number two, you must do your job while you're on the job. Okay. So what am I talking about here? Another challenge people tend to lose the opportunity to take breaks is while they're working, they're truly not productive. They're not doing what they're supposed to do while they're actually working, okay? Building that opportunity, that feeling, so they, one, ultimately feel deserving of the break and want to take a break, all right? So we're going to talk about this concept. So let's say you're actually doing what you're supposed to do. And I, and I have to say something. If you're super busy, and I know you may push back on this, if you're someone that's super busy, and that's not only real estate, that can be your life. Remember, it's not separated. Your personal life and real estate is one. It all comes into your day. If you're super busy, I'm going to tell you that it's easier to take breaks. That's right. Easier to take breaks if you do some certain things. So one, you got to do the job while you're on the job. What? Let's go over some specifics of what that means. Number one, if you're super busy and you don't have an assistant, that's a missed choice that you're making. I have to be really blunt on this. If it's a money reason that you're not doing it, okay, that's not a good reason. First of all, you can't live in the same scenario. You're either too busy, actually, Oh, and if you're too busy, that means you're productive. And if you're only busy in outside real estate scenarios, well, we have to look at that scenario. If you say, I'm so busy, I can't even work in real estate. Well, different challenge. And we certainly would have to dig in deeper with that scenario. But if you are busy, you absolutely should have help. You know, I've talked about this a thousand times, seeing, saying that if you're the CEO of your business, that certain things you should do lead gen, lead follow-up, and giving great presentations on a consistent basis, and get as much other stuff, important other stuff, but someone else should do that. So one, you should have an assistant. And I'm all about a full-time assistant because in my brain, here's why. If I hire a full-time assistant that's going to help me and I give clarity to that person, I want that person to do as much as they can do to make me as effective and as productive as I can be which opens me up to do more production, more opportunities for more presentations. So the reality of it is, is that is a positive opportunity to grow my business. And I will tell you this, there's no assistant, regardless of what they cost, will ever cost as much as the revenue I will lose if I'm not out there doing what I'm supposed to do. So you'll never win that battle with me. You can always earn more if you're out there as the CEO of your business doing what you're supposed to do rather than doing other aspects that truthfully, you know what, are important, but they're not supposed to be your job. Next, lead measures, okay? Consistent lead measures are the key. I've talked about this book, Four Disciplines of Execution. They talk about lag measures, which is the overall goal, and lead measures are the activity. Look, not a secret. I've shared this as well. I gauged my day by face-to-face -face appointments. If I got two in a day, five days a week, I was killing it. I never had to worry about anything. You know, we'll hear that there's so many goals we can have. And, and, and it's true. You got to break down all your numbers. You got to look at everything. You got to see what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. And you know what? I don't disagree with a lot of that, but you know what I like to do? I like to break it down to what's the one thing I need to do to make sure all that happens. So once I determine that, and I know for me in my situation, it was two points per day. 
okay, five days a week. Once I know that, I don't have to think about anything else. I'm not having to think about my goals. I know because I've already backed I've already backed into them knowing that if I'm doing my two appointments, Mark, you're already there. So all you have to do is never miss those appointments. Lead measures are everything. And so when I say you got to do the job when you're on the job, this is what I'm talking about. When you skip a day, I want you to feel it. Meaning I want you to know, and there's nothing wrong. We all can miss days from a standpoint of getting our appointment in. And let's say your goal is one appointment. I want you to feel it and go, God, I didn't get my appointment today but don't worry, okay? I'm gonna be back on track with one. You don't add them together, you don't do two the next day. If your goal is one, then the next day you go back to one. And I just want that to be as consistent as it possibly can be, all right? So that's what I mean about if you're on the job, you're doing the job, okay? Next, let's say you don't have an assistant today. Okay, Mark, it's a great idea. I probably should hire an assistant, but I don't have one. Ask another fellow agent. Here's what I see that happens all the time. Hey, look, I'm going to be going out of town. And I go out of town four to six times a year. All right? How about this? How about I watch your business when you go out of town? Because again, we should be taking our breaks. And you watch my business when I go out of town. Yes, you have to choose someone that you respect and trust that can do the job. I promise you. Okay? If you get focused on it, go to leadership. All right, talk to them and say, I really need to find someone who can watch my business and I can help them watch their business. You know, a lot of agents, they don't even charge each other anything to do it. They just know my breaks are important to me. Your breaks are important to you. You can take them. I'll do a great job on your business and I just need you to cover my business when I'm gone. All right. Next idea along these lines is schedule appointments upon your return. I'm sorry, schedule appointments prior to leaving for when you return. All right. So it, you've got your appointments set, okay, with whatever you need to catch up on and they're already scheduled out. So you're going to be gone for 10 days. Feel free, set appointments for when you're getting back. Okay. This way it's locked in. Those clients, if you're uncomfortable, are not a uh, 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 floundering out in the universe, you've got them locked in, but it's upon your return. And then schedule who's ever watching your business, be it another sales executive or another, uh, uh, or your assistant, part-time or full-time, whatever the case may be, is schedule a daily connect. I like doing it super early. I'm a very early riser. So I like doing it super early as long as it's okay with the other person and it works. All right, if it's another agent, you got to work within uh, their realms as well. Keep that time as short as possible. All right, if there's nothing to talk about, then just say, hey, just connecting, everything okay? Yep, nothing to go over today. Beautiful, done. You're, you're, you're out. But set up that, okay, and do it prior to, I feel, prior to the day starting or after the day is done. All right, if you're going to do it in the evening and you're just going to make that quick call, and if you don't need to be on the phone and get into anything, don't get into it. All right, number three must. You must be present, of course, when you're working. We discussed about that, but you also got to be present on your break. Listen, if you're going to take breaks and then th through the break, you're working the whole time, that's not a break. It's just absolutely not a break. And I'm going to talk about some of the failures when you do that, okay, and how it certainly can affect you. So if you want your break to be worthwhile and special, be there, all right? And that means you're there with this, not only with your body. You can show up, but guess what? You're not really there. And I know you know that's affecting the people if you took people, family, friends, or whatever on the trip, but it's certainly affecting you as well. I know stuff comes up. I get it. But if it's coming up all the time, you're the issue. All right? What you've done is you haven't making the adjustments to really say, I'm going to do my best to minimize these interruption, interruptions. Interruptions can happen. Sometimes it's an emergency and you're needed and you're the only one who can answer that question. Rare, rare, but it happens. You know, did you ever realize sometimes, you know, I just went through a situation, as you know, 
Uh, I got ill for a few weeks there. And you know what? The world didn't collapse. Things got done. I had a pack schedule. But guess what? Everyone understood and it all got handled. Well, guess what? You don't fall into the trap that you're a bat, you know, you're all that, a bag of chips. Understand it will get handled. All right. I know you think you're the only one who can close that deal. It's never going to close without you. I promise you things can work out. In fact, sometimes when we jump into certain situations before we should, and we haven't given them the proper time to work themselves out, now we've caused issues or we've ruffled feathers that didn't even need to be ruffled prior to that time. All right. Um, multitasking, okay? My personal opinion, multitasking does not work. All multi, and I know so many of us feel, oh my God, I don't multitasking. I couldn't even, couldn't even get my job done. I'm telling you, when you're multitasking, all you're doing is reducing your focus either on a couple people, on a couple projects, or whatever the case may be. I find it so much more effective when you got something to do, do it, get it done, and move to the next thing. Listen, again, I know real life, you get interrupted and things happen, but this is about making decisions and choices, right, that minimize those type of things, not maximize them. You know, just because something happens doesn't mean you have to go, ah, I don't have to worry about it. It's going to happen anyways. No, no, it's going to happen once or twice. Now you've got it happening 22 times. Minimize that. Multitasking. You know, have you ever been on the phone talking to someone? And they may not know it, but you're doing something else and you're honestly not listening to a thing that they're saying, okay? Or you're catching words here and there. Then they finally say a word that's meaningful to you and you're like, what? Go over that again. Why? Because you just got scared because you absolutely don't know what was just, uh, uh, what the conversation was just about. So again, minimize those types of things and you do that by ultimately being present, all right, when, wherever you're at, at work and or on a break. And number four must, you must take the time to determine what's really important to you. Look, I don't even want, I don't want to call it your why or whatever. I, I just need you to understand that if you're not taking the time to figure out what you want and what's important to you, no one else is. And I will also tell you floundering and just bouncing around or just doing work without understanding direction and not having that clarity, I promise you, not only will it affect your production negatively, all right, because it will, you will not get to where you need to be as quickly or effectively as possible, all right? But truthfully, a lot of times you end up with nothing. We hear about people in our business that no matter how successful they are, they just can't get ahead. They're always behind. They end even a great year and they're not where they need to be, all right? If you're in that percentage of people, again, it, it starts with clarity because once you understand really what you want to accomplish, it's so much easier to accomplish it because it's on your mind. All right, let me share some facts. Um, you are not at your best when you're working all the time. So if you think you're good working seven days a week, even six days a week, all the time. Six is decent, all right? But, you know, seven just is not effective. And take it from somebody who tried that for a, a, a long time and I was very ineffective. You know what the sad part is? You don't even realize you're not at your best. You're tired, but you know what? You're good. You can get it done. But see, here's what you're missing. You're missing that next level thinking. You're missing opportunities that you normally, if you were more rested, if you had your breaks, you'd be thinking about. You're missing created, uh, to be creative, okay? That creativity goes away because you know what? Ultimately, you're exhausted, all right? So you need to take the time and you have to understand as a fact, you're not gonna be at your best if you're not rested, all right? This one we hear, I know sometimes it falls into the cl cliche box, but you know what? Life is short and unknown. I think we, we see that around us uh, in many, many ways and we see it every single day. Well, you know what? We're part of those people. I know it does. it's not happening to us today, but at some point in time in the future, and we don't know when that future is, 
All right. The reality of it is, is we're going to have to deal with that. And so, you know, working hard is awesome. I truly do love to work, but I love to play hard too. And I love to do what I like to do. Doesn't mean that I have to do everything that everyone else is doing. You know, someone loves to ski. If I'm not a skier, I don't have to go skiing. But there are things that you have to be clear that you love to do that just help you go. <sighs> because I'll tell you, in a busy week, when you're doing the job, when you're on the job, and you can think about, hey, I'm rocking, this is great, but I'm also excited about my future trip that's coming up in nine days. Who's counting? I am. Okay, so keep that in mind. It can also be a motivator along those lines. A couple more items to help you with this. Having a daily routine and plan your day. Again, I've shared that I'm an early bird. I like planning my day early on. All right, so this way I know what I need to accomplish that day very early. If you're a late person, then do it in the evening. But waking up in the morning, whatever time that is for you, and getting your day started and knowing exactly what you want to accomplish that day is powerful. Going in, not having an idea of what you want to accomplish is just a waste of time, a waste of productivity, and sacrificing your break times because ultimately you're gonna have a self-fulfilling prophecy that you can't afford it, all right? And the reality of it is it's not that you actually can't afford it, is your re routine or lack of routine is sabotaging your actual opportunity to afford it, all right? Which comes in uh, uh, certainly not wasting time. Last but certainly not least is, look, free time, bar none, is a choice that there is nothing else to it. If you are listening to this and you're having any other excuse or pushback, all right, I will tell you, you can sit back. Listen, there are things going on in personal lives that are a challenge and they're very difficult. So I'm not here saying everything's easy and it's a snap of the fingers and you can do it. I am telling you this, that there are choices to be make, made. Some are tough choices, but once you have clarity of everything that you have to accomplish, and remember some things you may not have chosen to take responsibility of, all right, or you would have chosen, but guess what? It was thrusted upon you and you had no choice, okay? Or ultimately you did have a choice and you chose to help, okay? Maybe it's helping a family member or whatever the case may be, but you, you made that choice and now that's part of your daily routine. Whatever it is, you just gotta take that now new ingredient and break up your schedule. But you need to know it is absolutely a choice and I want you to choose wisely because you know what? You own your schedule. Your schedule should not own you. All right? I hope today was valuable for you. I hope some of these tips and some of these thought processes will help you take your deserved breaks in life and in your business. All right, because you do deserve them and you should take them. If this information uh, was valuable to you, always like, follow, and share. I would really appreciate that. Um, let me check with Diane if we have any questions today. Anything? Okay. Nope. No questions. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, 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 a lot of the positive comments. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed uh, that I am uh, now at the White House uh, presenting from here. Everyone's out. Uh, dealing with voting. So now I went to the White House to present. Uh, have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.